Good morning and welcome to St. John's Broad Creek. Welcome to our digital church. We'll begin this morning with the prelude. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his, his kingdom. kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let all creation bless the Lord till heaven with praise is ringing. Sun, moon, and stars be allowed accord. Stir all the angels singing. Sing wind and rain, sing snow and sleet, make music day, night, fall and heat. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts your greatest gift, which is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever lives is accounted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 through 11 and 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God has sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you as many survivors. So it is not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in this land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 37, verses 1 through 12 and 41 through 42. Please read responsibly by whole verse. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself. It leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while, the wicked shall be no more. You shall search out their place, but they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord will help them and rescue them. He will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them because they seek refuge in him. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. 
So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man, man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the, the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. 
Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. We had a hard time with, with this lesson from the Gospel of Luke at Wednesday night Bible study. People were really at a loss for what to say and how to find a way to be able to take these words that Jesus has given us and live them out. This whole idea of turning the other cheek and loving your enemy and if someone takes your coat, give him or her your shirt. These uh, acts which Jesus asks us to perform run against human nature. It's not... Uh, like it, like us humans to, to be so giving and so loving. Furthermore, oftentimes it can happen that if we are loving and generous, someone can take advantage of us. There are moments in this world when being loving can bring us great disaster and heartache. So what are we to do with, with this lesson? How are we to live out these words? How are we to do what God is asking us to do when it runs against human nature and perhaps puts us at risk in the world in which we live? Well, let's go back to the beginning. Let's look at the Old Testament and see if we can figure out what's going on here. This story about Joseph is one of the most wonderful stories in the Old Testament. Joseph was the one of the younger sons of Jacob. Jacob was one of the patriarchs. He was the great grandson of Abraham. He was the patriarch of the Israelites. He was the leader of the people who had been called by God through Abraham. And Joseph, his son, was his favorite. Joseph was intelligent. He was charismatic. He had a sense of humor. Everybody loved Joseph. Now, normally in this situation, uh, Jacob's oldest son would have been chosen to be the patriarch in the future after Jacob had died. And this son was fearful that because Joseph was such a wonderful person and so intelligent that he might lose out on his inheritance. So he, con he conspired with his other uh, brothers to create a situation where it looked like Joseph had died. But in fact, they sold him into slavery in Egypt and thought they would never see him again. Well, Joseph was such a creative, charismatic person that pretty soon when he was a slave in Egypt, people realized that he was a pretty intelligent guy and maybe he could be more useful as a counselor to the Pharaoh than just a slave doing menial tasks. And so he kind of worked his way through the Egyptian government to become an important counselor to the Pharaoh. And the most important thing he did for the Pharaoh was to teach him how to beat the process of feast and famine. Now, you probably know that Egypt is a country with rich agricultural resources because the Nile River floods every spring and waters the fertile ground along the banks of the river. And so the Egyptians were able to grow a lot of food and they were able to maintain a healthy population. But there were times when there was famine. So Joseph said, listen, Pharaoh, when you're in a very prosperous year, take whatever excess grain you have and store it. 
and keep storing it until a famine comes, and then you'll have food to feed your people because you've stored away a lot of the excess grain. And sure enough, that process worked very well for the Egyptians, and they survived many famines because of Joseph's insight and intelligence. So Joseph heard that the people of Israel, Jacob's family, his family, were dying of famine. And so he went to them and rescued them, and he got permission from the Pharaoh to bring them to Egypt, and they were saved. And he credited his action of saving his family with an act of God. He said, I am here because God has sent me, and I'm here to save you because God has saved you. Now, we all know what happened. As the years went by, the Israelites in Egypt became slaves again themselves. And it was Moses who rose up and with God's help led them to the promised land where they were able to establish their own nation. But again, the people of Israel were saved by God. And then later on, once they'd established their nation and they went into decline, they were conquered by the Babylonians. And all of the Israeli tribes, except for a few, were taken away to Babylonia, which today is Iraq. And they were forced to live in exile. And after many years and many generations, they were allowed to return to Israel once again because the Babylonian Empire fell apart. And they were they were fearful of being able to once again live in their land. It was foreign to them. There were so many generations that had passed that they had forgotten some of their Jewish heritage. But the prophets, in particular Jeremiah, rose up to instruct them, to tell them that God would provide, that he would inspire them to rediscover their old ways of worship and living, and they would prosper once again in the land that God had given them. Now, once again, in Jesus's time, the Israelites found themselves captives of another nation. This time it was the Romans, and the Romans controlled their destiny, their institutions, their livelihoods. Although they were allowed to practice their religion, they still were beholden to the Romans. And so God had to intervene again to reach his people and save his people. But this time he said, you know, there, there are getting to be so many people in the world that I think this time when I bring people my message of salvation and mercy, I'm going to make it a universal message. It's not only for the people of Israel, but it's for the people of all the world. And it will be a message of love and mercy and forgiveness and, most importantly, eternal life. And so he himself came into the world as his own son, Jesus Christ, and preached this truth from God, that this was a new age, that not only did God love the Jews and the Israel. Israelites, but he loved all people. And the disciples went out into the Gentile world and spread this message. And he said through Jesus that all people are welcome in my kingdom. I love all people. And what I ask you to do is two things, to love me and to love your neighbors as yourselves. Now, that doesn't take away from this tall order of turning the other cheek and loving our neighbors. But maybe we should look back at what Jesus did the night before he died. And that was he instituted the commemoration meal of his presence with the disciples. And this became the focus of our worship and still is the focus of our worship today. And he said, to his disciples, you will carry on my work. You will band together, you will support one another, and you will carry on my work. 
And they, in turn, built churches, of which we now are one. We have inherited their faith and their work. So what becomes possible in an impossible world that doesn't appreciate turning the other cheek and loving our neighbors as ourselves is the possibility of living within the church community by fulfilling these words of Luke, the words of Jesus as presented by Luke. We, as a church community, can love one another and be merciful to one another and share what we have with one another and expect not to receive in return, but to do that simply because God has called us to do it. It is possible within our community to live out these words. It is possible to show mercy within the church to one another and for the church to continue to exist and to be strengthened through our acts of charity. And furthermore, when we act as a loving community, and new people are attracted to us or come to join us, they too begin to experience the promise that God has made through Jesus Christ, that it is possible for people to love one another, and that at the end of time when God returns once again to liberate his children from the bondage of this world, that all of that love that we have shared and that he has shared with us will exist forever. And we will be with God in a loving and merciful place for eternal life. This is how we can live out these words that we have heard this morning within the church, knowing that at the end of time, God will come and show his mercy to all of us. Who have labored to do his will. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, sometimes it is hard to do what you have called us to do. We ask you to give us the strength to share the strength that each of us has with one another, that we can be inspired and empowered to fulfill your commandments. Help this church Help each one of us to be merciful, to be loving, and to share what we have. In your son's name we pray. Amen. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sakes, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, 
and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy, just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against, guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled, especially James, Geneva, Kathy, Jackie, Nancy, Michael, Ed, Henry, Huma, Rashad, Tony, Shelley, Wendy, Rocky, Walter, Jenny, Charles, Sandy, Barbara, Matt, Kathy, Valra, Sharon, and those who we remember now, either silently or aloud. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bind us together in one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who, are, who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. As you have raised them to imperishable and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning, St. John's. I'm here to report on your vestry meeting from this past Thursday. We are currently making plans for the Easter season. This will include a drive-by Ashes to Go on Wednesday, March 2nd at the Circle from noon until 1 p.m. We're still firming up plans for Easter Sunday. However, we are hopeful that we will have the audio video system in place, which will allow us to live stream Easter Sunday service. As of now, we hope to return to in-person worship in the church on Sunday, March 6th. Stay tuned for updates on this. We will have our annual meeting on Sunday, February 27th, immediately following worship on YouTube. The invitation for the meeting will be sent out along with the email about the YouTube service. We hope you all can attend. We have some important items to discuss. Finally, our diocese has asked, has passed a resolution for the formation of a task force on black ministries to study the revitalization of black churches in the Episcopal Diocese of Washington. Um, this group will be responsible for making recommendations to diocesan council to enhance, revitalize, and empower our black churches and black parishioners. The task force will consist of 10 members from historically black churches or churches who have significant black membership. We feel that St. John's needs to have a voice in this and are looking for people who feel called to this work. If you are interested, please reach out to me so that I can send you the link to apply. Applications are due by February 25th. You may reach me on my email, which is betsywinters at gmail.com. Thanks, and we look forward to seeing you at the annual meeting. Hope everyone stays safe and warm. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.